So, a few weeks ago, I was procrastinating as is tradition, watching YouTube shorts, when I started to come across a new form of slop content, which I assume you may have encountered as well. This is relatively new, so I believe I found myself a goldmine, which I can exploit to my desire, and break the whole YouTube platform with it. Or perhaps nothing will actually happen, and this video will be like 500 views. This new type of brain rot content on YouTube is a game called Falling Pickaxe. The whole game is basically a pickaxe falling down infinitely and breaking blocks, and the viewers can trigger events in the game by sending commands in the livestream chat. Some of these commands are changing the pickaxe properties, the speed of the game, or spawning TNT. And it even takes into account donations. Hello, I like money. This made me curious, and after a quick search, I realized that the game is not available for others to use, and also it's not as spread yet, since there are like three livestreams in total on YouTube, all with their own version of the game. One of the authors of this game, I think the original creator if I'm not mistaken, doesn't really want to share it. Anyways, after reading that comment, I just felt like ruining the fun for those few people, so here I am. So the plan is to make the game myself and open source it so we can flood YouTube by having everyone stream their own falling pickaxe game. So first things first, we gotta get the basics down. I slapped Pygame into the project like it owned me money and then generated the texture atlas just to get things started. Then I did some highly scientific testing with the YouTube API. I used the lofi girl stream to make sure I can get the chat messages in a reliable way, which worked like a charm. After this, we need a window setup. We need that perfect 9x16 aspect ratio for optimal vertical brain rot efficiency. And here's a sneaky bit. Internal width and height because it allows you to resize the window like a maniac without the game itself stretching all weird. Also, I locked that aspect ratio tighter than I lock my wallet during a steam sale. Needed a background, so I uh, borrowed a screenshot with some shaders from one of my survival worlds. Pretty basic. Now it's time for chunks. Started generating them and they immediately ran into bugs that made my eyes bleed. What even is that? Anyways, I generated an empty chunk with bedrock walls only and since chunk generation was being a pain, I did what any sane developer does. Procrastinate by working on something else. So I added physics using PyMonk and immediately broke chunk generation again but I fixed it, eventually. I filled the chunk with dirt while trying purling noise, and it looked like a sad, lumpy oatmeal. In classic fashion, I decided to fix it later. So next, I added the most important thing in the game, money, no, I mean the pickaxe, with some gravity. And yeah, the camera doesn't follow it, right, needed as well, minor detail. After that, I added some basic box collisions, which are kinda lame, so I decided to get fancy. I drew a complex polygon for the pickaxe collision, and it moved like this. What the f Okay, I drew the collision boxes around it to see what the heck Pymonk was thinking. And yeah, my polygon was a, a rock. So after much tinkering and ending up with what I can only describe as an ice cream cone, I decided that I need multiple polygons cause Pymonk hates concave shapes more than I hate forgetting semicolons. Oh wait, I'm using Python, never mind. And the hitbox needs to be the same shape as the pickaxe, obviously. Also, scale the pickaxe texture to 16x16 16 because, uh, reasons. Don't question it. For the real collision shape, I needed help, so I found a website called GeoGebra, which let me slap the pickaxe image on a grid and trace the shapes. I drew three different polygons, starting with the stick and then the two halves of the pickaxe head. And it works, look at that beautiful multi-part collision. I then adjusted the friction, bounciness and gravity. Ok, so we need breaking blocks, so I assigned HP to them and whenever the pickaxe hits a block, it will subtract the damage from the block's HP. If that reaches zero, then the block gets deleted. Simple. Yeah, collision boxes are looking good and they're gone. No more ugly red lines, we don't need them anymore. So back to the terrain, I scrapped that ugly dirt and got rid of my sad attempt at generating it using purling noise. Instead, I used plain old simple random choice because we never go back to generate the same blocks later like Minecraft does based on a seed. Also, I wanted a nice starting chunk, so I added a layer of grass, a layer of dirt and a bedrock ceiling. You'll only see it for like 2 seconds when the game starts, but who cares, I think it looks cool. Then I got tired of typing block chances manually, so I made a weighted random function. You give it a weight and it figures out the probability. This makes terrain tweaking so much easier. If you want more stone, set a higher weight, less diamond, just lower it. And honestly, the results were surprisingly good. Next, I decided to add some random obsidian blocks as well, and if this video hits a thousand likes, I'll add another dimension, probably. But for now, it's just an annoying hard to break block to slow the pickaxe down. Now for the secret sauce, which is something that I haven't seen in other Fallen Pickaxe clones. Block breaking indicators. 
This made the game a thousand times more satisfying to watch. And yes, even Bedrock gets cracks. So you can technically break it, but it has like infinite HP, so good luck with that. Now it's sound design time. And yeah, I messed up the recording badly. So it sounds like it came through a potato wired to a rusty tin can. I fixed it later, but for now you'll have to put up with it. Trust me though, the real sounds are truly satisfying. Then I came back to the breaking indicators because I got a wonderful idea. What if they healed? I added a cooldown of 5 seconds after the last hit, and after that the block starts repairing itself. This makes things even more spicy and more accurate to real Minecraft. Ok, I'm calling it now, I think people are going to steal this whole idea. Also, hearing the wrong breaking sound for dirt and grass was driving me insane, so I added the proper sounds. And now it's time to add even more juice. Got a basic TNT class, sprinkled some random TNT every few seconds, and I couldn't get it to render. It took me like 20 minutes to realize I was drawing the TNT texture to the wrong screen. This is programming 1.1, my saying is, if you can't seem to figure out something, and you tried anything you could think of, then it's probably something stupid. Things like this happen to me all the time, and I don't think I was ever wrong about this. At least in my case. Anyway, I got the TNT drawing right, now I gotta make it explode, and there are a few things that happen when a TNT gets ignited in Minecraft that I have to implement. First, it plays the ignite and explosion sound, which is a single file by the way, and the TNT starts blinking. After 4 seconds you can hear the explosion, the TNT disappears, and a bunch of particles appear. Oh, and it damages the blocks around based on some random algorithm which I can't bother to explain. Yeah, that's the stuff. Made the radius smaller though, cause I didn't want to make it too OP. And then I tweaked the TNT bounciness and friction to give it a better feel. At this point I actually started procrastinating by just watching the pickaxe fall. And I zoned out for like 30 minutes just looking at it like some kind of zombie until I snapped out of it. I really wanted to finish this project so I had to continue using sheer willpower. Now we need to track the loot. For this we need an HUD with some icons and numbers. And when an ore breaks the number goes up. I also made this so that Reston and Lapis drop multiple items when they break, just like in real Minecraft. And I added a Y lever indicator just to know how deep the brain up goes. For the next feature we're going to tweak the PyMonk physics step, so we can slow down or speed up the game, and we can add a text indicator on the HUD as well. Next let's get some more pickaxe variety. I made it randomly change to any of the pickaxe types in Minecraft, each with its own properties and also room for custom pickaxes later. After this we need a pickaxe to change sizes, so I need to randomly make it 3 times as big, then make it go back to normal. And while doing this I had some uh, minor bugs. With all this chaos I gotta make sure the pickaxe doesn't just phase through reality and escape the chunk. So if the pickaxe goes out of bounds it will be teleported back in the middle. Safety first. While doing this I realized that the text on the HUD was kinda hard to read, so I gave it a slight black outline to increase the contrast between the text and the background which made my eyes very grateful. One thing that I didn't mention is that while all of these features seem cool in theory, there is one really important aspect that makes everything much more engaging. And that aspect is timing. If each feature triggered on a fixed interval everything will become monotonous very quickly, and you'd probably get bored and click away from the stream. So to fix this I made all of the features trigger on a random interval which can be easily configured. This also makes it seem like other people are already engaging in chat with the game even if nobody is there. And the final boss of this game is to add the YouTube API integration, which is kinda tricky because the API has a really small daily quota. This means that if you want to run the stream 24 hours a day, then we need to call the API roughly every 44 seconds, which is very slow and not as interactive as one could hope. To solve this I added a queue system so the chat commands actually enter a queue and later get executed based on a timer. This way people won't spam commands as often and we can also get better interactivity. Of course you can still set a smaller interval for the API at the cost of not being able to run your stream all day long if that's what you want to do. Choose your poison. I used Petir's stream to test my game since everyone is already sending commands in his chat. At some point someone even donated and I got like a million TNT in my game due to a bug which I quickly solved. There was also a bug where TNT sounds wouldn't play if too many sounds were being played at the same time. So I added more audio channels which in turn might have made everything a bit too loud. Sometimes. And bam, 
That's the journey. From a blank screen to a fully interactive, kind of, physics-based, brain rot inducing YouTube-controlled Minecraft pickaxe nightmare, also made in, of course, a fitting nightmare language, Python. The code is up on GitHub, link in description, and make sure to check the readme if you dare attempt to run this abomination yourself. Of course, this wouldn't be interesting if I also didn't do a fun experiment of running this game on my secondary channel to see how much it can actually grow. I will try to leave the stream open for at least a week to see what happens, and at the end of it, I will post the results in my Discord server. So join up if you want to see the glorious results or the spectacular failure. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this descent into madness. If you did, you know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay hydrated, don't let the brain rot consume you too much, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!